What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here. We're now going to move on to the next chapter in the course, Capital Structure. And this is a big chapter. I consider this chapter in the same category as other large chapters that we did before, like capital budgeting or weighted average cost of capital. Basically, these concepts are going to affect the company on a very large scale. So let's do a little quick review of the biggest concepts that we've covered in finance so far. So what happens is that you want to start a company, so you go in the market and you raise a mix of debt and equity. You take that money, you buy some assets for your company, and then hopefully your assets are making you some income. So then what happened was we got a little bit more specific with this balance sheet here. So we went into the debt portion and figured out how to value the most common form of debt, which was bonds. So there was a whole chapter dedicated to just valuing bonds. And then the next chapter was dedicated to valuing the most common form of equity, which was stocks. Then we went over how do we grow our company? How do we grow this asset side of the balance sheet? Well, we do that by taking on positive NPV projects. That's what will give us long-term growth of our company. And we went over in detail how to find the NPV of projects in the capital budgeting chapter. Now, this money that we received initially to buy our assets and start our company, we're not going to get that for free. We have to pay back these debt holders, these equity holders. So these debt holders, we have to pay them back a cost of debt. These equity holders, a cost of equity. And then what we did was we took an average of how much all of this money is going to cost us. So we took an average of the cost of debt, average of the cost of equity. Also, if there's preferred equity, we included that. And we found something called the weighted average cost of capital. And in this chapter, we're going to further work with this right side of the balance sheet. And more specifically, we're going to be answering this question in this chapter. What capital structure, which another way to say capital structure is what mix of debt and equity will maximize firm value? Right? So capital structure, different companies can have different capital structures. Maybe one company will have a 10% debt, 90% equity capital structure. Another company may have a 30% debt, 70% equity capital structure. So another word for capital structure is basically the mix of debt and equity on that right side. And we want to figure out what mix of that debt and equity will maximize firm value. Well, you may be thinking to yourself, well, don't we just maximize firm value by taking on these positive MPV projects that will ensure that our assets are growing? And that's true. However, that is only looking at the left side of the balance sheet. There's also things that we can do on this right side here that can help us maximize firm value. And if you remember, this right side is basically the sources of capital. And then we have to pay back these debt holders, these equity holders, this weighted average cost of capital. Well, if you think about it, if we can lower this weighted average cost of capital, meaning the sources of capital are fairly cheap for us, we don't have to pay back as much interest or as many dividends or as many capital gains on this equity side, then that's also going to maximize firm value because we're going to have more cash left over to invest in these positive MPV projects. So it's like an indirect way of growing the firm. So we can actually add on to our question before. So what capital structure, what mix of debt and equity will maximize firm value or minimize the cost of capital or the weighted average cost of capital? Now notice how we can play around with this right side of the balance sheet here. We can change this mix of debt and equity without affecting the left side at all, keeping the assets consistent. So we can always change up this debt to equity ratio whenever we want. So for example, let's say that we want to lower the debt to equity ratio. So this debt to equity ratio, maybe I'll show it like this. So it's like a numerator over de uh, denominator. So if we want to lower this ratio, what we can do is we can lower the numerator so we can lower the debt or we can increase the equity, right? Because increasing a denominator makes the whole ratio go down. So we can do both of them at the same time. So increase equity, the way we would do that is we would go in the market and we would issue more equity. So there would be more equity holders here. We get money from them and then we can take that money 
and we can pay off our debt or some of our debt. So we're simultaneously increasing equity, issuing new equity, and then lowering the debt by taking that money and paying off some debt. And then notice how we didn't do anything with the assets. We just change this capital structure here on the right side. We change, uh, we change the debt to equity ratio. Now, what if we want to do the opposite? What if we want to increase this debt to equity ratio? Well, what we can do is we can increase the debt. So we can increase this numerator and we can also decrease the equity, decrease the denominator, because if you decrease the denominator, that whole ratio is going to increase. So the way this would work, if we increase debt, what that means is we are borrowing more debt. So we would go and borrow, I'm not gonna write more, let's just write debt here. So we're gonna go borrow debt, and then with that money that we get from these new debt holders, we're gonna go and we're gonna repurchase shares. And repurchasing shares, if you remember, is just the same thing as like paying back shareholders. It's just another fancy way of saying paying back shareholders, repurchasing shares, that's what that means. So borrowing debt, we're taking on more debt, we're increasing the debt, increasing that numerator, and then we're repurchasing shares or we're paying shareholders back so the equity portion is going down, so we're decreasing this denominator, and overall this would increase our debt to equity ratio. So notice how we can play around with this right side here. We can change the capital structure fairly easily with these steps whenever we want without affecting this left side. The question is, what mix of debt and equity is gonna maximize the firm value or minimize the weighted average cost of capital, and that's what we're gonna be answering throughout this chapter.